Hello everyone. In this video, we'll see what is statistics, its definition and uh, various procedures involved in statistical analysis. Statistics is an important part of almost all uh, different types of uh, professions and uh, it is an important subject in the curriculum of various courses. So whether it is uh, students who are learning economics or students who are uh, learning engineering or anyone who is uh, conducting any research based activities, uh, they can be from education field or psychological field or they can also be from medical uh, field uh, for medical science doctors. But all of them need to learn statistics because they will be using statistics at some point in their profession or some of them might be using more as well. Uh, so we'll see uh, the definition with uh, step by step procedures and we will see in the end uh, certain case studies where this statistics is implemented. There are various definitions available for statistics and uh, I have picked the most uh, simplest definition of all which is given by Croxton and the definition says it is the science of collection of data, classification, the representation, analysis and interpretation. Analysis and interpretation of numeric data. This is the definition given by Croxton. Now as per this definition, we need to collect large huge amounts of data and we need to classify them into various groups and we choose uh, there are different uh, ways of representing this data. We choose uh, one method over the other depend depending on the situations and we do some analysis on that collected data, organized data and we are going to come to some conclusions from that data and based on the conclusions various management process or uh, uh, you know uh, business decisions can take place. Let me give you certain examples. Uh, this statistics is used in various fields as I told earlier. Uh, say an organization wants to decide uh, upon investment into marketing. Uh, so they, there are different marketing strategies and they want to make investment on marketing. And the sole idea of this is to maximize profits. For this they need to first project the demand. They need to estimate what might be the demand or what might be the sales in future. So that is called as projection of sales or projection of demand. This is done with reference to the previous data. Whatever data or whatever sales data is available for that organization and also for various other companies, various other products uh, can be from the same manufacturer or from competitors. So they do this uh, analysis of sales of products of their own company and also of other companies, other brands over the past few years and based on that they are going to project the sales or the demand for the upcoming season. Accordingly, uh, if they choose how this much investment might be required to make this amount of profit. So for these things they will make use of statistical analysis. So same thing goes with the uh, medical field wherein if they want to uh, find out uh, efficiency of a drug, efficiency of a medicine on a particular uh, uh, health condition on various categories of people. Here they need to first collect the data from various volunteers who are suffering from a particular health condition and under certain circumstances and they are also going to group them based on say ages or lifestyles based on various factors they might group them and uh, after giving this medicine for those people over a period of time, they monitor the progress and then according to the analysis, they come to a conclusion whether this medicine can be given or not, whether this medicine is effective or not. And also the conclusion might not be exclusive. Say for example, they might come to a conclusion saying this medicine is effective only for this group of people. This medicine should not be given for a particular group of people who are suffering from some other health uh, conditions. So such types of analysis and conclusions are done with the help of statistics. So that is the reason statistics is important in almost all fields of study. Now this we have seen the importance of the subject, applications of the subject and now we will see what are the each and every uh, steps that is mentioned here how to perform that. So here the first one given is collection of data right collection of data. 
So what is data? It is the uh, information that has been collected. There are two types of data, primary and secondary data. Primary data is the data collected for the first time. Data collected by the researcher or analyst. Collected by the analyst or the person who is conducting the research or by the team. So data collected by this analyst or a team for the first time for solving a specific a particular problem or for performing a particular analysis that is called as primary data means this is not existing already it is something that you have collected for your research purpose that is called as primary data so what is secondary data is already there are certain sources of data like uh, we have international sources like who uh, we have uh, imf so these are the sources where we already have data readily available so ncrt gives uh, uh, ncrt has a lot of data and we have uh, data from isi etc so these are trusted sources of data where enormous amount of data are already available you can use that data so you can save time in uh, collecting this data you don't have to collect all the data required every time if that data is already available then you can use that data itself it can be published or unpublished sources also say for example if i am conducting a research on uh, online uh, education quality and then uh, i have enormous amount of data that i have collected that becomes primary data for me because i have collected it uh, from various sources for my research later say after a month or two you are going to perform a research on in which city online education is in huge demand now for this more or less the data required is already available uh, that is collected in my research so you can use the same existing data instead of freshly going through that uh, data collection process which is a uh, enormous uh, tedious task you know instead of doing that you can already use the existing data so the data that i collected which was primary data for me becomes a secondary data for you because you are using existing data so uh, such data is called as secondary data so this is collection of data now if we look at various uh, uh, procedures for collecting data there are many like you can uh, have uh, questionnaires handed to them you can conduct online surveys to collect data or you can uh, uh, have a mailed questionnaire or you can have a telephonic interview or you can go to the place itself and observe for yourself whatever data you want you can collect it so these are various uh, ways of collecting data so collection of data is the first process in statistical analysis the next step is classification of data so what is classification is so after you collect this enormous large amount of data after that you need to classify them means you need to group them into various categories so this is grouping data into various categories into categories also called as class intervals it can be categories or it can be uh, class intervals so once we have collected uh, enormous amount of data we need to group them into measurable intervals so only when we group them into measurable intervals we will be able to come to certain conclusions say for example if i have to find out the same example that i gave earlier that is uh, effectiveness of a particular medicine uh, to cure a particular illness then if i have to find out that then i need to group the patients group the volunteers into different class intervals or different age groups so based on per particular metric based on uh, a particular value we will be grouping them okay so suppose the example that i took i might uh, decide to group them into uh, intervals of this sort say i want to find out uh, infants i will uh, collect 200 uh, samples from infants who are newborns to age of say 2 years and then i want to find out uh, the effectiveness of this medicine in kids who are 2 to uh, say 10 years and then i want to find out the effectiveness of this medicine among teens who are from 10 to 19 or 10 to 20 years and then i want to find out in the youngsters or uh, youngsters or i'll take it as youth 
so where uh, i will take people who are from 20 to say 35 years and so on and so forth so like this we have to create class intervals and in this class intervals we will uh, uh, mention the values that is how many people have been cured how many people have been uh, uh, seen a considerable improvement and how many of them absolutely didn't have any improvements at all or there might be certain people who had adverse effects as well so such things we can measure using various variables now this is classification of data we will group them into various categories that is classification the next step is representation of data so after classifying this data into various groups we need to represent it for representing we have again different uh, formats each one preferred over the other among various situations the first one is textual representation in this data is represented in the form of detailed text usually for final analysis purpose it won't be expressed in the form of detailed text it will always be expressed in the form of a table with values under variables that's how it is uh, expressed but if i'm collecting some data from lot of people i don't know what all data what all data is required now i know but i might require some other data in the future research projects also so what i do is i'll collect all possible data and represent it in the form of text in the form of detailed paragraphs so that is called as textual representation directly it won't be able we won't be able to use it for analysis but this serves as the base for uh, statistical analysis from this we can pick out only those values required and we can uh, uh, create a tabular representation which is our next type tabular representation so tabular representation is something like this so we have groups and then we have number of values so how many people cured from 0 to 2 years how many people were cured there were 8 infants out of uh, 20 who were cured and uh, if i take 20 uh, people in kids maybe 12 of them cured so this is values i'm going to represent under each class intervals so that is called as tabular representation where we have a table we have some headings for rows and columns and we have values that are representing the uh, data that we have collected so that is tabular representation of data next you have graphical representation of data graphical representation is where you will write uh, diagrams like graphs charts in order to represent the data under tabular representation we have uh, frequency distribution table we have cumulative frequency uh, table or we can also have uh, uh, relative frequency table and uh, under graphical representation whatever we have written in tabular representation the same thing is expressed in the form of a graph here we might use a histogram and uh, uh, we might have frequency polygon we'll see what each of these things are in the next uh, uh, segment frequency polygon or we have ogive curves ogive curves that uh, uh, represents less than or greater than cumulative frequency so we'll see all these things tabular representation uh, as i told you you will have a frequency distribution table frequency distribution table and uh, you have cumulative frequencies relative frequencies all these things we'll see one by one so this is how we represent data after representation is done next we will be doing the analysis of data so analysis of this data so when you have to analyze this data there are various measures that we will find various formulas are there uh, there are various uh, measures that are required in order to come to some conclusion so here you have uh, uh, measures of central tendency which is all the middle values central values that represents the entire group so here under measures of central tendency we will be learning mean median and mode and then we have measures of dispersion in measures of dispersion you will be learning in measures of dispersion uh, you will be learning uh, uh, measures like uh, range what is the range and then uh, what is a 
standard deviation mean deviation under measures of dispersion these are the measures that are used for analysis we have range mean deviation uh, standard deviation and then we have coefficient of range coefficient of mean deviation coefficient of standard deviation uh, we have uh, coefficient of variation uh, which is used instead of coefficient of standard deviation we also have quartile deviation which is not usually part of the uh, degree studies and then we have uh, uh, analysis of variance which is also called as ANOVA in that we have one-way analysis and two-way analysis this is that this uh, variance is nothing but square of standard deviation so we have an analysis of variance as well so in this we have uh, one way and an ANOVA two way ANOVA and all these things one by one we learn all the things then the final stage is interpretation of results or we come to a conclusion based on this interpretation of all this data now based on these measures we are going to decide what should be our uh, future activities, further activities. Say for example, as I have uh, told throughout this class, based on what was the sales of all the previous years, we do certain calculations and then we decide what is the future projection of the sales. And uh, this we do it for two, three different products. Then we decide how much amount needs to be invested and on which product we have to invest or if at all we need to drop a particular product because it is not performing well in the market and investing money on it and uh, producing production of more of these products will only lead to loss. Suppose that is the interpretation done, then we might drop that product. Instead, we might invest a little more on a successful product which is doing well in the market. We might uh, uh, invest more on creative advertising of those uh, products, marketing and advertising so that it will increase its sales. So this kind of interpretation we will do that is done by the management or uh, that is done by the authority who are authorized to do take such uh, decisions and those decisions are completely based on these analysis or these values, values of these measurements. So this is about introduction to statistics. In this, as I told you, uh, we have only seen the what is the subject and what are various steps of it and uh, uh, why it is important and where all it will be used. So this we have seen. If you found this video useful and uh, if you want to learn complete statistics, then uh, consider subscribing to the channel and also turn on the notification icon so that whenever I post a new video on this subject, you will get a notification uh, for the same. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.